So, uh, first day at camp, what goes on? First day, first day. Or can you uh, tell me? Yeah, yeah, that's the fourth day, you know, when the kids get all the sugar highs and stuff that right. we were talking about, you guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, first day, these kids, they're, they're definitely used to, to skiing within their zone, which would be the lower mainland in Whistler, Mount Washington mm -hmm. on the island, or wherever else. But they, they, they don't know these other kids from across Canada. And so everybody's very timid, very shy. Uh, it's definitely Mike and I. <laughs> You know, picking picking conversations at right. dinner and really getting these kids out of their shell. Uh, day two, a little bit of the same, but they start going up the chairlift with each other and everything. And by day three, it's it gets a little out of hand. I mean, it's this, we're, okay, we're the living cowboys with the kids. are there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, racing. Uh, well, we don't. We have the gates set up. We're training. Um, mm -hmm. We're not doing. We don't do. Yeah, any official races. Right. But yeah, we we usually there's some fun prizes given out and that kind of thing. Sure. So, yeah. Because as you said, everybody's not a pro. No. Well, everyone's right. in the ski racing, but right. yeah, it's not a sanctioned race event. It's just a training camp so that mm -hmm. they can take these aspirations. Go and back skills. to their teams. Yeah. Go back to their hood and put it all together. Yeah. How great! Right. So World Cup this year. Tell me how World Cup works. I know you go to Switzerland and Bulgaria and Italy and all well, of that. Well, you, you, you say goodbye mm -hmm. to uh, your home for about three, five months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, yeah, you go over to Europe, uh, which is the main chunk of it. And the World Cup schedule is just our, yeah, our bread and butter of, of racing. Uh, it starts off in Lake Louise, Beaver Creek in the States, and we're over in Europe, all countries like you said, Switzerland, Italy, yeah. Austria. And um, yeah, we have generally a race every weekend. Um, and mm -hmm. all the fans and come out. Not and having any fun, of course. And to, speaking of fans, uh, some night racing. Is there some night racing? Is it Switzerland? Uh, the there's, ones in, are, there's a couple night races, but Janik would take part in most of those. Okay. Those are the so small the events. Small. Yeah. Obviously, not into the bar. The big one in Schladming. Not, not that race. Yeah, yeah. Schladming, Austria. It's actually a really cool event where they're having world championships this year. There's 70,000 people that come out, and it's like a soccer stadium on the side of the hill. Um, it's pretty spectacular. F flares going, right. yeah, it's... Well, you know, you must notice the difference. I don't know if it's like this <laughs> anymore, but when I was uh, hanging out with the skiers in Europe, uh, the Europeans are, uh, the skiers are rock stars. You know, Franz Klammer comes off the plane or something and everybody wants autographs and all of that. And over here, not so much. Do you still see a difference when you go to Europe and ski and when you ski here and race? Yeah, the, the, I mean, the world has definitely gotten to be a smaller place with uh, multimedia sure. and all that stuff. Social but media. Social media. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's still the same over there. I mean, it's huge. Those guys are, are, are big names. I mean, in Austria and Switzerland, that's their Those guys? Sport. What about you? This guy's not a slouch over there either. Well, that's the yeah. thing. Because <laughs> but he, it's great. You come home. I hear he was in the Olympics. Did you hear that? Uh, someone told me. Yes. I heard so. Uh, going back again? This one? Uh, uh, hope, so, hope to be, well, I'll be racing definitely World Cup and hope to be at the next Okay, Olympics and how do they well. decide that? How is that decided? Olympic team, Canadian Olympic team. Uh, for the Olympic team, we have four spots. Uh, it's, it's gener it, it will be the, the, the top three guys in your discipline will, will get to go either in a downhill Super G giant slalom or slalom. Right. Uh, and then they leave the last spot. Uh, if there is a medal contestant, they'll be in the spot, or they, they try and take a junior kid that may have a better chance at the next mm -hmm. Olympics for some experience. Okay, so take me to the top of the course. Uh, oh uh, a slalom or, or downhill, superstitions, uh, things you do before you leave the gate. Uh, I used to be a lot more superstitious than I than I was. Like all the, if I had a great race, I would uh, try to keep the same uh, long long underwear, same turtleneck. Uh, two years ago, uh, Katy Perry was playing on MTV when I left my room, and I came fifth. Darn, too bad and she I, wasn't I, in your room. I know, and I came playing <laughs> on the TV in your room. Okay. And then I came fifth, so I took that song and put it on my iPod for the next three races until I didn't come top ten. But you know, there's things like that. Yeah. But um, I try to be a little more independent from those mm -hmm. things. And but there's always those little ticks, like clicking your poles twice before you go out of the start, sure. or. There's always those things. Whatever yeah. it takes. Do you have any? See, that's funny because I've spent my whole career being superstitious about not being superstitious. <laughs> so I've tried right. to not be superstitious about <laughs> anything. And you're like, get your mind out of there. This is why we're a good team, you know? Of and course. I've, I've definitely spent my whole life trying not to be superstitious about uh -huh. anything. Because what if you lose the rabbit's foot? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then you've got it in your brain because it's such a mental game. Totally. It's a physical game, of course, but it's a big mental sport. Well, oh, yeah. I think because you're all by yourself. 
that's that's one thing that uh, that lots of people don't understand about the skiing is is you get to the you're in the finish line as as a spectator you're in the finish line it's loud there's noise going on everybody's cheering you watch the big screen as a ski racer you push out of the gate you you hear your serviceman and your coach you know give you a little pep talk and then you're alone for two minutes yeah. and it's yeah. a very a very surreal feeling mm. of just being alone I'm sure. and then you go through the finish line and it, the, the party's there yeah yeah but it's, it's definitely hope. a very yes. surreal feeling the whole <laughs> or way there's down. that look oh, and you, yeah, you, you think how long was i on the course yeah, yeah you definitely mm. scan the crowd before you look up your do you time. get a sense like if you're uh, you know jumping or twisting or doing a ski thing uh, of how fast you're going I can erase. I, I, I know you, you do get it. You do know, like especially if you have an amazing run, you can come across the finish line and you know you killed it. And uh, when you don't have a great run, you know you weren't sure. good. Uh, but there are those ones in the middle where you're like, I hope, I hope mm -hmm. it's something, but you gotta check. So it's the two ends of the spectrum, you know for sure, and it's in the middle where it's a little cloudy. Right. Yeah. And the outfits are much better than they used to be. Ah. I have to say. Well, that's good. That's good to uh -huh. know. Well, you know. We're moving in the right direction. Moving yeah. in the right yeah. direction. It's it's all good. And what kind of boots do you ski in? Uh, Manny and I are both Rosniel. Um, okay. Yeah, we're both uh, Rosniel athletes. And, so. and uh, skis? Yeah, same. Yeah. Rosniel. Same, so it has to be same, same, same. Uh, well, it Not doesn't, necessarily, it doesn't but necessarily they, they sponsor right. you. Yes. And oh. it's been great. I mean, just even for this camp, Rosniel's brought in uh, equipment for the kids in the past and stuff, and it's been a lot easier for us to... To run this, I think, as well right. with with being on the same company. Okay, and injuries? Any injuries? Uh, I've had I've had uh, a couple. Uh, I've blown my knee, had a back injury, broke my leg twice when I was uh, 13. But lately, I've been uh, been all right. Mm -hmm. Been yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, and training outside of it, you too. Uh, I've had all the same, other than I have only broken my leg once. Ah, okay. okay so. And where do you train when you're not training on the hill? Uh, we're uh, I'm presently in Calgary right now, training at uh, the Canadian Olympic Center. Okay. And uh, I will actually be going over to uh, New York for the next couple of months to be training with Steve Nash's trainer. So oh, great. Just, uh, oh, a little that's bit, a good trainer. Yeah, tra changing it up for the off season. Can you play basketball? Uh, I cannot, and hopefully it'll help me a little bit, but I think I'm far, far gone from being good at that but sport. But is there another sport you love? I, d I dare we mention hockey today, maybe not. Oh, yeah. How about Maybe that? we're going to have to just take. Well, it. we do have a hockey camp that uh, that the t we do on the ski team. We've done for three years, where we go out to Magog in Quebec, mm -hmm. and we get together as a team mm -hmm. and put on the gear and and uh, do a four-day hockey camp. Uh, the you know the videos should not be seen by most people, right. but uh, it's still fun. Yeah. Sure, and as you know, if you've if you've played a lot of hockey, usually you can ski a little bit. Yeah. Hey, actually, I just uh, I just did a trip. Um, to Whitecap, uh, just up past Pemberton there, a four-day ski touring trip with Trevor, Trevor Linden. Right, and yeah. uh, that was, that's been his new love since he finished playing hockey, and mm -hmm. I was pretty impressed. I mean, the stuff that he was skiing as an as intermediate to expert skier, I guess, now. I know, he's uh, strong, it was, and it's some of the same moves, a little bit. It's depending. a very similar position. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in that yeah, race-ready position, and, and the stride in, in, in sure. hockey is uh, similar to a Well, you know, before turn. you were born, there was a Chicago Blackhawk, uh, Eric Nestorenko, and he now teaches skiing at Vail. Oh, really? Yeah. After, wow. You know, retired, and yeah. there you blah, go. blah, 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 and, teach, and he hadn't skied much, and he skis like a maniac. I don't think I'll be teaching hockey after I retire, though. But. You don't know. <laughs> usually doesn't go that yeah. way. No, it, it goes doesn't. the other, the other way. way. Yeah. You retire to the Swanee <laughs> Resort in Sun Valley, yeah. don't, you know, or Whistler. How nice to meet you. So ski Very camp nice to starts. Meet you. When you. does it start? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. So yeah. I'm too late. Wow. Your application to get year. in. Yeah. Pretty much. I'll get... Uh, Layson? No, you don't say that anymore. I'll, I'll buckle up. There you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, thank yes. you. Thank uh, you Manny Osborne, Paradis, and Mike Janik, World Cup skiers and Olympians.